lovely to see you again. How's everything going and how good does it feel to be back in the one circle? Uh, I'm feeling really good. It's, it's really nice to be back in the cage circle. Um, I'm really excited. You were previously ranked to atom weight and now you're not in the rankings. Do you feel that was warranted? And do you feel you can make a case to get yourself back in that top five? Well, I just need to show my, show everything in September 3rd and I hope I can be back in that ranking. And what do you think about the one women's atom weight world Grand Prix? What do you, why do you think that you were passed over as a contender for the tournament? I, I think the Grand Prix has a really good basis. Um, I think it's important to give chance to um, new faces, young athletes. So uh, I think they selected those kind of new faces. We're going to go now to Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. As a pioneer of women's MMA, how important was it for you to be on this card Friday night in One Empower? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a, it's very big thing to have one championship to get the only women's card event. And, um, I just, I think I need to give the exciting match performance and get all the ladies get ready for that tournament. Of course, but it's been a year and a half since you competed against Denise Mbwanga. What did you learn in that fight and what improvements can we expect to see from you? I did a lot of boxings um, and go through all the skills in every, any situation. So I hope I have a chance to show that. Cool, nicely. You're obviously an alternate for the Grand Prix. Out of the eight ladies that are starting in the Grand Prix, who would you say is the favourite in your mind? Um, I know Ham So He for a long time and I fought her too so i kind of cheer for her but all, all the ladies they're special and i hope they have a good chance to great chance to have the challenge the title up next is jude briosis from overtime heroics mma go ahead jude i said how do you feel now that at the age of 38 you're fighting in the grand prix and having what may be your last shot at the one women's atom weight belt I don't really care about the ages, you know, age is just a number. And I believe that I have a lot of skills to show um, regardless of my age. Uh, I think, um, you know, Grand Prix will have a lot of good fighters and they will have chance, but, uh, you know, since it's a tournament, you won't know what will happen. So if there's someone who got injury or uh, something happens, I'll, I'll be ready to get in that spot. We go now to Jack Gottsell from Tops Off Sports. I may, uh, I've noticed in two of your last three victories, you've gotten the win via armbar. Is that a technique that you've been working and improving on? I know you also had an armbar finish back in 2013. Do you possibly see another armbar finish in this upcoming fight? Um, yeah, armbar is a thing I always look for, but um, hopefully I can show other techniques and striking too. Up next is Raj Shankar from Essentially Sports. Off you go, Raj. Obviously, you've got a career-defining fight ahead of you, but you already have achieved it all in the sport. You are one of the true veterans of Asian MMA. Now, looking back at the fight against Angela Lee, which you lost by an anonymous decision, many felt that the decision could have gone either way. Do you feel that you need to get a win over Angela Lee to, like, is it a very important fight for you or do you just look at it like just any other scrap? Well, um, yeah, the fighting against Angela Lee is very exciting all the time. And if I have a chance, I would love to. The Angela Lee and Mayamaguchi 3 will be pretty exciting but um it that's not the only thing i always look for uh even if i have chance to fight other fighters uh i would love to i just need to do whatever uh at whatever i need to do at that time okay and 
you've been a Jackie Chan fan all your life. Like you've always told about your love for Jackie Chan. So in a post retirement career, like can we expect you to see in some sort of action movies? Like if you ever get an offer to work with Jackie Chan or maybe in some other sort of action fleet, will you ever accept it? Yeah, of course. Uh, I love his movie. And, you know, since I was a kid, I always try to do things he did. But, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to watch his movie. And I'd love to be in that movie sometimes if I have a chance. Next up, we go to Dylan Bowker of My MMA News. I'm just curious because you have, you know, great success in Grand Prix in the past with Deep Jewels. He also won that tournament with, you know, Valkyrie winning their featherweight title as well. I mean, how important would it be to become part of this Grand Prix fold here, just in the sense that you seem to have a lot of tournament success? Well, you know, it's uh, the quickest way to challenge titles. So if there's a chance, I would love to be in the part of the Grand Prix anytime and um it's always exciting the fighting against the new faces and if you won the first round you see another another fighters in second round and that's you will know who will come and that's all the time exciting for the fighter and for the audiences so it's the grand prix is pretty fun so um this time it's one match for me, but um, I'm always looking for a chance to be in there. And just as a quick follow-up, because I was noticing there was multiple times that you were supposed to compete with Meng Bo and, you know, canceled for a myriad of different reasons. Is that a matchup you'd like to have at some point in the one circle, or is it kind of just you'll test skills against whoever and you don't think of it through that kind of lens? I guess I'm curious just because I imagine you've diligently studied to fight her. Yeah, um... I'll fight anyone, but yeah, but fighting against Membo is very, pretty exciting. Um, she's a great striker and I would love to challenge her. Our next question comes via text from Tom Taylor of Bleacher Report. Do you think your upcoming fight with Meza Barber will go the distance or is somebody going to get KO'd or submitted? Without revealing too much of your strategy, what have you got planned for her? I'm guessing she's pretty strong and physical. Um, she has pretty aggressive striking. So, well, I want to show my skills in boxing too, but um, if I can submit her, that's, that's the best way. You mentioned earlier Shohi Ham. Having gone the distance with her and having been in those two legendary fights with Angela Lee, a lot of fans are very excited about Siohi Ham in one championship. Which do you think is a superior fighter, Angela or Ham? It's kind of hard to guess. Um, both have their special techniques and uh, they're, both are great. So it's, it's hard to guess. But, um, well, if Angela Lee defend the title, that's that shows that her greatness and she really that um, it will show that she's really special, especially against uh, Ham So Hee. But um, Ham So Hee fought in so many, so many places, and I don't know uh, if she gets the title. That's really exciting too. Our next question comes in from Nick Atkin of SCMP MMA. Uh, so, mate, I just wanted to know, how long have you known you're going to be a part of this tournament as an alternate? And how difficult has it been to stay ready with all the cancellations and then all the delays and changes and things like that? You know, until the last moment, you won't know what will happen in these kind of tournaments. So I'll be ready all the time. And it... First, I was going to fight in May, but it was a lot of delays and cancels. But, you know, I, I take this time really positive and I had really good time to, um, to learn new techniques and you know, go over every, every single technique that I need to learn. So it, it was pretty good time for me. And what's your mindset now? You know, if you get this win, are you almost expecting, you, do you have to expect that you're going to come into this tournament at some point 
And given we have seen the Grand Prix with the lightweights, with the men fell apart quite a lot a couple of years ago, are you almost expecting in a way that you might actually get in there somehow? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of fighters won the tournament from the alternative. So um, look for that chance too. May, we already mentioned Siohi Ham, but a lot of people picking that Denise Sambawanga fight is potentially the most exciting fight in the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Which fight are you most keeping an eye on as a martial artist? Which one appeals to you? You know, every card has a really interesting thing to watch. And, but yeah, I agree with that. Zambaga and Hamasohi is the most uh, exciting match in the first round. It's, it's like a final. I feel like it's a, that card is a final for the tournament. Denise kind of came out of nowhere in her trajectory and won championship. She was young. She stacked up the victories and, and got that number one contender spot. Have you been impressed or surprised by her progress? Yes, it's very impressive and surprising. Um, she's physically strong. Her heart is a true warrior. But um, yeah, I, I'm really curious how she's going to fight against Ham Sohee and how so he is going to stop that. We have a text question coming in from Derek Wright, who says, having spent time in the US and Asia, what do you think is the best way for one to grow its USA present? Oh, that's pretty hard, um, hard question. Well, um, you know, USA has a lot of events um, and they have a lot of good, MMA fighters. So there are a lot of few few of the fighters coming from USA. So I hope they will uh, send more to one championship. You've been part of uh, different moments in history at one championship. Mentioned the Angela Lee fights earlier, arguably some of the greatest MMA matchups ever. How does it feel to be on this all women's card? Another piece of history and power. Does it feel special to you and does it give you pride? Yes, it's very special. Um, you know, fighting long in this mixed martial art, um, I saw a lot of women's fight, and it's always, it's it's always getting better. And now it's it's getting better and better. And one championship has this special event, so I'm pretty, pretty uh, exciting to be in the card. You had your first MMA fight in 2007. Now there's so many young up and coming talents entering the game. Itsuki Hirata is only 21. Have you noticed a change in the level of these young mixed martial artists? And when they step in, do they seem more well-rounded? How does the level compare with when you first stepped into the game? Yeah, all the young athletes has great, great technique, and they learn really fast because MMA is growing too, you know. Um, but the important thing is how long you can continue to learn that new, new thing and uh, keep improving. So yeah, I hope all the young athletes ha will keep, keep challenging and make the history. We have a text question coming in from Ivan Stewart of Dugout Philippines, who says, assuming that you get inserted into the Grand Prix, would you want to face the winner of Sio versus Zambuanga? Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, I would like to challenge. I'll be curious. I mentioned Itsuki Hirata earlier, who's your countrywoman, who I guess currently is the representative of Japan in the tournament. Is that an interesting one for you, both being representing Japan and you could be the second representative if things turn out well. Just how good is she, do you think? She's really talented and very aggressive in any, like uh, on her feet and on the ground. So um, she, I think she's really good, but I'm not sure it, it depends on the opponent probably. So 
I think this time it's her uh, her time to show her true her her level. Given how closely your own fate is intertwined with the goings on of the Grand Prix, have you been keeping a close eye on it? And were you surprised to see Ritu Pogat earn her way back into the tournament? She that that was um, really I thought that was really good a good thing to for her to go, get back in the tournament. Um, I hope similar thing happens to me too. You've seen many illustrious belts in your career. The one championship Grand Prix belt is pretty special. Uh, where does it rank in terms of the most beautiful belts in the sport, do you think? Oh, I think that's the best. I saw the picture. It, I think it says uh, 12 kilos, I think. So that's, that's pretty gorgeous. And um, I think that's the best one I've seen ever. This uh, card very much is, is promoting women in MMA. Do you think that's something you'd like to see more of in the future, all female cards? Do you think that's a good way to give a platform for the best martial artists on the planet that are, that are women? Um, it's great to, to have these kind of events continuously, but um, I think we um, women's card should be in the male's card too, like uh, we, we usually do. I think we need both 